If you're looking for an iPhone 11 Pro Max transparent case, what cases come to your mind? Some people might think the Apple clear case that just was released alongside the 11 Pro Max and the 11 Pro. Other people look for the Chinese knockoffs that cost maybe two or three dollars a piece. Other people like the skin cases, like totally. Other people want a little bit more protection than just the little skin, but they still want to be able to see their phone through it. Enter speak in cases. Whenever I was online researching about transparent cases, these two cases came up a lot. This one is the Speakin Ultra Hybrid X, which the X, or S, I'm sorry, the S stands for stand. And this one is the liquid crystal that does not have a stand. Th this one, I know this one for a fact does come without a stand, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Are either of these cases worth your time? Well, let's check it out. In the last video, there were some commenters saying that the knife made them nervous. So as you can see here, there are no knives yet. We'll just leave that there for now. Looking good. All right, let's get into it. The Spigen cases that we have here, another salt shaker, are the Ultra Hybrid S and the Liquid Crystal. You can see right off, the Liquid Crystal is mostly just a, a flexible case. Doesn't offer too much protection. The Hybrid S has a little bit more protection and has a stand so that you can stand up your phone if you wanna watch my YouTube reviews or check out my Twitter or my, no, I'm just kidding. So with these two cases, overview, they are pretty basic. They're just your standard transparent cases. The buttons on both of them are the same. You can see that they're the same design and the edges. This one has a little bit more of a cushion, it looks like, than the hybrid case, which we're gonna say this is the liquid and the hybrid from now on. I'm not gonna say the whole names, the full names. So on the outside, you can see that they're very similar. One thing that I did notice whenever I got both of these cases was look at this. You have air cushion technology, okay? You have Spigen, you have, what does that say? Spigen Inc, Irvine, California, made in South Korea and some numbers and letters. Why do you need so, oh, here's a, I'll do you one better. This one also has the writing here, the writing on the top, the writing on the other side, and imagine that, another label of the manufacturer on the stand. This is pretty cool, I do enjoy this, this feels, I wanna say this is maybe aluminum, and it has a spring inside of it, so it'll always spring open. And you can see the magnet inside here that really helps keeping it. I don't know if, yeah, you can flick it open, but I don't know if I'm ever gonna do that that hard with my phone inside. One thing I noticed with it, this does get scuffed. I had it for one day, and I just carry my phone in my pocket with nothing else, and it did get scratched. I assume that was because when you lay it down, the clip touches the countertop or your surface that you have it on. So as we said, the outside design on these is very similar. Basically, the only difference, as we said before, this is flexible, this a little bit flexible. I know it doesn't have the same material on the sides. One downside I see about this case, a lot of people say that the yellow over time, I paid $12.99 on Amazon for this one. So if if it gets yellow, buy a new one or even get a cheaper case if you're not, if you really don't care about brands or looks or anything like that, you just want a generic thing. The hybrid cost me $14.99, so $2 more. I think that with the kickstand, that was a dollar extra. This on the liquid crystal, it's just smooth all around. No fancy things about it. Oh, this has an edge on it. So whenever you lay it down, it 
it doesn't touch your camera onto the surface. This has that also on the side. However, it has these on the edges to lift up your phone, lift up the case off of the surface so the back doesn't touch. And speaking of the back, what do you notice? Fingerprints. This, you know, you can't really get around it with a transparent case. You got, you got your fingerprints, so what are you gonna do about that? Inside of the case, not too much going on here. This, the liquid crystal has, has some sort of texture back there. I'm not sure why. The hybrid, nothing. It's completely smooth. Now the phone inside, let's do the liquid crystal first. The phone inside the case is pretty nice. It looks good. You got to get this iPhone 11 Pro Max. Thank you for people letting me know that the iPhone 10s Max does not have three cameras on it. Thank you so much for letting me know so many times that I messed up on that. Love you guys. So as you can see, you can see it's transparent. This becomes very apparent on the side. This becomes apparent on the top. This is more apparent on the side. The only place it doesn't have the logo is where you have all your port cutouts, That, for what it's worth. I noticed with this case, if you can see, there's a little bit of give before it actually hits the button to actuate the buttons. And that goes for all of the buttons on the phone. Take that with a grain of salt. It really doesn't affect the function of the phone in any way. Um, one thing I noticed when I first got the liquid crystal is whenever I, I would grab it by the sides, I can still feel it. I don't know. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it's like the case is bowed out like this, like bowed out a little bit on the sides to where it doesn't. It has gotten better, I'll admit that. Whenever I first put the case on, it was very apparent. It felt loose, it didn't feel like the right size, but now it seems pretty good. The camera cutout, that lip on the camera, does pretty good, no wobbling here. And you got a pretty nice lip right there that will lift up the phone from setting the phone flat. Moving on to the hybrid case. And also this one, that one's really easy to take off. Hybrid case now, putting the phone in, easy as pie. Same thing with the logos here, all of the text. I, I don't think that's absolutely necessary to put all of that. I could deal with just the logo here. That's not bad at all. Um, same thing with the camera cutout. One thing I noticed, I was about to criticize this phone case, but I, I realized something. I set it down and I thought, oh, these must have a, a good way to keeping the phone off of the, the surface so you don't scratch your nice transparent back. So I put it down. What do you notice about that? Yep, it's because of the kickstand. And so the other cases that don't have the kickstand, the ones that are just the flat backs, transparent backs, they they won't have this. Um, the stand, that's really fun to play with. I'll, I'll just be here playing like that. That's really fun. So with the stand, you can see it pretty well. You can see me back there. I'll do an, a face reveal, if you will, in a future video. So the kickstand works really good. A criticism I have about it is that it's a little bit too angled. I wish that it would was like maybe like at that angle instead of, but you know, that's again, I nitpick a lot about cases. Um, buttons on this, about the same. They, if that bothers you, you might want to look for another case, how they're a little bit, little bit squishy before they touch the button. One thing I noticed about the, hey, the time changed. One thing I noticed about the fit and finish of these cases, that's a big deal for me. The You can feel that seam right there where the back and the sides meet. I don't think it's the same material. I, I thought that this was a TPU material, like a little bit more grippy, 
but it's it is a little bit smooth speaking of grippiness that these these are good these if you have the, you have oil on your hands your natural oils from your skin these cases are great to protect against slipping out of your hands this one this one has even more grip than the other one because the plastic the tpu is a little bit more has more friction on it so this one yeah this one has a lot more grip but if you notice i don't know if that's my phone or if it's starting to get yellow or if it's the lights above me i don't know if it's starting to get yellow i'm really paranoid about that because i do not want a yellow case i want a nice transparent case that will protect from minor drops and falls oh we didn't do the fit and finish on this one um this this one is actually really good. There's no, there's no seam here. It's smooth. Unlike the mouse case, you can actually see that it has more of a rounded profile to it. So it doesn't come flat out and then just drop at an angle. So that's appreciated. This one is the same way, but this one, since it's raised up, this is lower. And then this, that part is raised up. So whenever you hold it, you can definitely feel those seams on the sides. Oh, that's not good. You can feel those seams. It's not it's not really a big deal. Also, if you nitpick about these things on the corners to lift up the case, those can irritate you too if they if they're hitting you in the wrong place. For the kickstand on this one, I was worried about holding it like this. Oh, hit the camera here, little sheep. You need to get back in. I was worried about holding it because my wife has a actually have her case right here. She has, and I'm sorry to do this to you guys, it has a pop socket on the back. I am not a fan at all of pop sockets. So whenever I, I held her phone, this is the case I was talking about in my first video against the mouse limitless case, that this one felt so much thinner. It felt like basically a naked iPhone. And I was worried about upgrading from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone Pro models or the Max models. I was worried about it being too big, but she she likes this one because she has the pop socket. It doesn't, it's really easy to hold on to, but I can't do a pop socket. I got a carbon fiber one and put it, used it on my phone for, I think it was just like half a day and decided that I, I just couldn't do it. Wasn't my, wasn't my thing. So these two cases, can I recommend them? I would say that if you're looking for something inexpensive that protects pretty good, that the rubber on that seems, you know, just for minor drops, you're not going to be throwing these from the International Space Station to the Earth, trying to get YouTube views that way. If you want something simple that doesn't cost a lot, if you lose it or break it, you know, $12, $13, $14, it doesn't break the bank. I, I wouldn't want to buy another one of these if it went yellow. If it did get yellow, I would just probably not buy that anymore. But all things considered, these two cases do fit my criteria for what I wanted for my phone. One last thing, a question that gets asked a lot, well, pff, of my one video that I have up right now, something that I get asked a lot is the legendary Apple leather case. This probably is in my top three cases for the iPhone. I've had one since, I want to say, since the iPhone 4. I'm not sure when exactly they came out. might have been the iPhone 5, but these are excellent cases. One thing that a lot of people at, will ask about is how thick it is compared to these cases. From going from thinnest case to largest case, the order is actually... This one is the thinnest one, and this one is the thickest one. Granted, it's only like, this one is probably half a millimeter thicker, and this one is, let's say, a tenth of a millimeter smaller. It is noticeable side by side, but I imagine that if you're carrying it around every day, it's not going to make that big of a difference that you can feel. So Spigen gets a thumbs up on both of these cases. It just really depends on what you're looking for in a case. Are you wanting something that's that's flexible, more grippy, 
or are you wanting something a little bit harder that they say won't get yellow, that you're pretty much not guaranteed, but you have a little bit more confidence since it's not the TPU material, that you'll have something that will protect it a little bit better. I think that this one probably will do a little bit better. Maybe against drops. I don't know. I haven't, I'm not going to do any drop test. What we are going to do this time is see how cut resistant they are. So let's put these two. Yeah, right. I'm not going to do that. And that will conclude the video today. I'm glad you guys stopped by. Always appreciate the views, the likes, the comments, the positive vibes that everybody gives. It's been generally well received and I, I appreciate you guys watching these videos I do in my kitchen. This, I couldn't find the tablecloth that I usually use, the black and white one. I'm looking at getting a, like a big mouse pad, something that will add a little bit more, more of a vibe, a better vibe to the, to the reviews that's not this Formica surface. A sneak peek at the next video that I will have. This was a game changer for me. As you know, by the last video, or my first video, this one was my first case. And for the people who asked about fingerprints on this one, and the one guy said that they do not show fingerprints, I would like to offer this as evidence that you can see the fingerprints. So, this case was the original mouse that I had. I had to go out and do it. Got the contour case. So, this comparison, this is a game changer. Stay tuned for the next one to see what my thoughts are and why this one is definitely better for me than the Limitless case. Glad you guys watched. Thanks a lot. And until next time, lights out.